Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to talk about the ideal pendulum. An ideal pendulum is a pendulum where all of the mass is at the farthest end away from the support string. So the string is essentially massless and all the mass of the pendulum is over there. That's called an ideal pendulum. And as it's swinging back and forth, notice we have the weight of the pendulum pointing straight down and then we have the restoring force, which is mg times the sine of the angle theta. Theta is the angle from the vertical to where the string is located at any moment in time. So then we can take a look at the arc length right here. We can see that the second derivative of the arc length with respect to time is equal to the second derivative with respect to time of L times theta. L theta is the same as the arc length. L is a constant, so we end up with this expression. And then using Newton's second law that MA equals the restoring force. Remember when we push the, the, the uh, pendulum in one direction, the restoring force is in the opposite direction. That's where the negative comes from. So we end up with this equation right here. And then if we turn that into our differential equation, notice it looks almost exactly the same as it does when we have a spring, a mass on a spring that's oscillating back and forth. Now, for small angles, sine theta equals theta, or approximately equals theta. We can replace that, and now the two equations look identical. So now you can see that the angular frequency of oscillation, which is the square root of k over m, which is the square root of this term right here, that would be exactly the same for a pendulum. Again, as long as we have small angles, the angular frequency of the pendulum is equal to the square root of g over l. Now, since omega, the angular frequency, is equal to 2 pi times the oscillatory frequency, we could solve for f, and then we can see that f is 1 over 2 pi times omega, where omega is equal to the square root of g over l. And so therefore, the oscillatory frequency of a pendulum is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g over l, and the period, which is the inverse of the frequency, is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l over g. So those are just simply the two equations you need to remember if you don't need to know how the equations were derived. As an example, let's say the length is 1.2 meters. We know that g on the Earth is about 9.8 meters per second square. We plug in the numbers in this case. The oscillatory frequency would be 0.455, so when the pendulum is about 1.2 meters long, it will swing back and forth like this. That's our oscillatory frequency. That means that the period, which is the inverse of the frequency, would be about 2.2 seconds. So 2.2 seconds will go to one direction and come back to its original position. And that is what we mean by an ideal pendulum and how to derive the equations for the frequency and the period of oscillation.